Hello Winnie Game fans, it's already a month into 2021 and I do hope that this year has been better for you so far but I just wanted to take a minute to appreciate the great pixel art games from last year with my top 20 picks. We begin with a lesser known title in Terran Fate, a farming life sim title where you play as a witch. While not the most amazing high bit pixel art, there's a charm to the look of this game, looking similar to something like Stardew Valley which is something that I love. Radical Rabbit still does have a simple pixel art style but it's very well done, having some cute sprites which works well for the main character and the bunnies. It's a fun little arcade action title which people seem to have missed, so if that is you, check this out. An impressive pixel art survival action platformer is Mists of Noya, setting me on the animations but the overworld and characters look good as well. It's a survival crafting defense title, similar to something like Terraria, where you scavenge for resources in the day and defend against enemies at night. Chugging along nicely in early access with a 1.0 release sometime this year. Coffee Talk did appear on my previous video covering good looking pixel art games of the year, but I do have to give this cozy narrative game another shout out. The characters are central here, where the whole game is centered around learning about them with expressive faces and good designs aiding the cozy vibes of this. I Dracula Genesis did appear on my Rogue Lights of the Year video, but I do have to give it another shout out since I do think it looks good using an isometric camera angle but with pixel art which is interesting. A great Rogue Light entry as well, which still seems to be underrated, definitely give this a go if you have not. The action roguelite with farming elements, Atomic Crops is a deceptively challenging entry, looking like Stardew but playing like Gungeon, and made its way out of early access last year. Post launch, this developer did put out the Time Flies and Invasive Species updates for free, which is what I love to see from indie devs, so please support them if you have not. The puzzle platformer title Evans Remains will also be familiar to viewers of the channel since I've mentioned it a number of times, but my gosh, what a beautiful game. I like the use of lighting and water reflections in this, although I'm not such a big fan of the character portraits. But the game itself is a fairly straightforward puzzle platformer but does have an interesting central mystery.
One of the later entries of the year is Morbid the Seven Acolytes, a Souls-like action-adventure title that is delightfully gruesome. It's not subtle in its design, having blood and guts being front and center, much like Blasphemers from 2019, we adventure to defeat the Seven Acolytes in order to save the world. A little muted in colour and tone, being classically grimdark, but a good look which I appreciate. Monster Sanctuary came in high on my personal list of the best indie games of the year, being a turn-based Pokemon-like RPG but with Metroidvania exploration, and gets a spot on this list as well. Again, not super amazing high bit pixel art, but I do think the look works for this game, with the creature sprites in particular being a highlight. Nice environments and animations as well, and this too has been getting post launch support in the form of end game content, so again, do support this developer. I have a soft spot for retro games, and Prodigal is no exception, a Zelda-like action-adventure title where you play as the Prodigal's son returning to his hometown only to find that a great deal has changed. The look is of course similar to games on the Game Boy Color, making it wonderfully nostalgic, and I have to say that it apes that look very well. It has also been getting post-launch content which I'll cover in my big content patch series, so again, show this developer some love. The one bit World of Horror also deserves special mention since it's an art style that requires a tremendous amount of skill to get right even more impressive when it really does look similar to the horrific creations of one Junji Ito. I've mentioned a number of simple looking one bit games over the years, but the shading and attention to details in the environment makes it wholly impressive. I wasn't quite sure where to put Proteus on this list since it isn't pure pixel art, but this retro FPS, or like one of you put it, a boomer shooter looks fantastic. Combined with awesome action makes it one to watch. It's classically old school in design like Doom and Quake from the 90s, with an array of powerful weapons at your disposal. Like I Dracula Genesis above, it mixes 2D enemy sprites with a 3D environment, giving it a unique look, but the gyps and blood spatter combine to make it feel awesome. I'm a fan of games which simply feel good to play, and a game which absolutely nails that is Scooch Booker described as Dead Cells meets Celeste, which is not too far from the truth. The pixel art here is very crisp and well made, if on the simpler side, since the game is divided into rooms and you don't really get those massive vistas and skyscapes for example, but the look works well for this type of game.
I mentioned the original Bloodstained Curse of the Moon in my video covering the best modern action platformers, so I do have to give its sequel a shout out as well. Developer Inti Creates is perhaps not so indie, but it's amazing that they're still making 8-bit titles in this day and age. This is a classic Vania title, so more linear action platformer with branching paths, but the ability to switch between characters on the fly is a nice addition. This sequel added more playable characters at new levels, while also retaining characters from the first, so it was interesting to see how they blended the two together. It looks spot on as an 8-bit title as well, and as such, is a no-brainer for the list. Speaking of 8-bit, one of the best modern examples to do so is Panzer Paladin, another linear action platformer that's a little bit of a hidden gem since I don't think it sold that well, which is unfortunate. Battle your way through various locations in the world is to defeat demonic invaders from space. Having an interesting weapon-based system based on breakable weapons and the spells that come along with it. Awesome look with some great boss designs, this is a title not to be missed. Despite being a relatively new release, Fate Tactics has climbed to the top of the tactics game genre, being an excellent one of these mechanically and of course aided by the pixel art. There's such a variety in the Fate creatures that you can summon, with elements like terrain, elevation, positioning and elemental effects affecting the combat making each battle feel great when things go according to plan. Some interesting meta systems as well, and a no-brainer for fans of the genre. Time to kill some. I love the look of Hunt Down, another level-based action platformer which uses style, using a retro-futuristic setting with some awesome enemy designs. The game's enemies are broadly grouped into different gangs, some of which are delightfully ironic, where you have a choice of three playable characters and even supports local co-op. Boss designs are critical in games like this, and it is on point here, even having a surprise or two which is always nice to see. I really cannot get enough of the look of Record of Lodos War, Delit and Wonder Labyrinth, a very Symphony of the Night-like Metroidvania title, currently in early access. As I've noted before, this is from a Japanese developer which means a softer pixel art style, but my goodness, this looks so good and I'm waiting for the full release. Another high bit pixel art title which has been on my radar ever since it was announced is Carrion one where you play as the monstrous alien blob and have to skulk around hunting down the humans.
The use of lighting and particle effects here, especially that of enemy flamethrowers, is one of the most impressive bits, but coming from the developer that also made the impressive looking butcher, this was not a surprise. One of the most successful games of the year as well for good reason, check it out if you have not. And of course, Star Renegades takes the pole position since I have been enthralled with the look of this ever since I came to know of it. This roguelite RPG is perhaps the definition of a modern hybrid pixel art game where everything from the bosses, characters, enemies and environments are so detailed, really looking to be the best of 2020. I caught wind of this game since I am a fan of the developer's previous work in Halcyon 6 Starbase Commander from 2016 and was eagerly anticipating the next title and I'm glad that it did not disappoint. Some of these do have a couple of hundreds of frames of animation, all lovingly handcrafted, so for the amount of work to result in such a great looking game deserves special mention and it doesn't hurt that the game itself is fantastic either, taking the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos and I will see you after the jump.